Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're gonna talk about NPR reporting on NPR laying people off. That's kind of funny. NPR, of course, uh, is pretty left wing and NPR has spent years attacking gamers and mm -hmm. uh, like this article from 2018. I thought this is from 2014. They have a lot from 2014, including uh, backing up Anita Sarkeesian. But um, 2018, right wing hate groups are recruiting video gamers, guys, uh, coming from NPR. And now uh, NPR is hit with uh, massive layoffs and they're canceling four podcasts. They're they're cutting 10% uh, of its workforce and um, yeah, they had to acknowledge it themselves on their own website. Wow. That's kind of kind of awkward, isn't it? Like, yeah, it is awkward. It's like when they make someone makes you dig your grave and then they put you in it. It's oh like, my god, <laughs> that's pretty much it. No, it is. It's like the one. There was a story about some Russian guy that his friend abused his daughter or something. He basically, you know, at gunpoint made him dig his own grave and then, yep, there you go. In the hole you go. Uh, so yeah, they they dug their own hole. A lot of these media outlets dug their own holes. And in the case of NPR, like I understand the ad revenue is drying up, but they're mostly listener supported and they're not getting as much support as they, mm -hmm. they used to get. So uh, let's let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants, guys. Uh, almost 300,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Greatly appreciated. Uh, yeah. So we've been covering the implosion of mainstream media and we're going to see uh, a quickening. I think we're going to see a lot of outlets now. I do believe NPR will be around for years to come, but it's going to be leaner and meaner and it might have to be more center if it's going to survive. Well, especially I don't know if it'll be around for many more years, but you know. Eh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You but, can be the positive one for this one. But, um, you know, they just had to lay a bunch of people off uh, and they had to cancel podcasts, which is weird because podcasts are actually doing pretty good right mm -hmm. now. Podcast rates are good. So when I see people like, oh, we had to lay off podcasting, I'm like, that's like one of the last things yeah. you should be cutting at this point. But OK, OK, so we'll we'll go out to Fox News because they're just giddy that this is happening. And then we'll go out to NPR just kind of reading its own obituary. Um, but yes, let's let's not forget that NPR really, uh, really went in pretty hard against gamers back in. Well, every year from 2014. I was just saying, what do you mean back when? Yeah. NPR hit with massive layoffs, cancels for podcasts. Uh, the publicly funded news outlet cut 10% of its workforce impacting uh, roughly 100 employees. So they don't have a lot of people. They only have 1,000 people working there. National Public Radio was the latest media organization to implement mass layoffs. Uh, NPR itself, <laughs> how awkward. NPR itself confirmed Thursday it had cut 10% of its workforce on Thursday, impacting roughly 100 employees, adding it tends to roll back the workforce from 1,200 to uh, a little over 1,000, largest reduction in staff since the 2008 recession. Hey, I hate to break it to you. But we're at the beginning of something that's going to look a lot like that, especially in tech, especially with media. And uh, I'm sorry. I'm mm -hmm. so sorry. It's like Doctor Who. It's like, I'm sorry. Uh, we literally are fighting to secure the future of NPR at this very moment by restructuring our cost structure. It's that important. It's existential. NPR, wow, that's that's worse than just laying off 10% of your people. NPR Chief Executive John Lansing told NPR's media correspondent, David Falkenflick. Flick and Flick. <laughs> this is unfortunate. Fortunate. The, I'm sorry. The liberal outlet also halted several podcasts. Invisibilia, Louder Than a Riot. Oh, my God. Rough Translation and Everyone and Their Mom. Now, you use your imagination to figure out what some of those podcasts are about. I don't even know. No, but the no. titles, I'm just like... Mm. None of the radio shows were canceled. Uh, so here's here's a thought. We had a little stinger at the beginning of of our broadcast here at uh, Clownfish TV. Give us NPR's money. There you go. If you're going to donate to NPR, give it to us instead. Uh, we don't hate you. The, cu the cuts come after NPR assessed the ad revenue was set to drop $30 million. Every person on staff cares deeply about public radio's mission and has worked hard to contribute to it. This is a painful time for everyone in this organization, a spokesperson told Fox. And I'm sure it was painful for them to actually have to go to Fox 
Because Fox is like, hey, guys, so you just we'll report. cover it. We'll cover it for you, but you have to talk to us. Yeah, you got to talk to us. According to NPR, most impacted staff will remain on the payroll until the end of April. The Washington Post reported that Lansing and Washington Post, which is going to be up for sale and they're laying people off too, uh, reported that Lansing signaled NPR management to work with its charitable foundation to seek more funding if a deficit continues to widen. So even with the layoffs, they're, they, they, they're trying to look for a plan B. So let me let me um, paint a picture of the landscape right now. In fact, I shared this with Geeky just the other day. We had we do run multiple websites and we've been doing this for years. So I had an email um, from our ad network on for our websites. Now we're fine, but I'm just saying they sent an email out kind of panic because they're like, hey guys, hey, yeah, just so you know, it's probably just a, like they try to make it sound all rosy. Just so you know, it's probably like a bump in the road or whatever. But like, um, yeah, the ad rates are going to just suddenly start dropping off and I, I think it'll be okay next month. But if you can just hang with us, mm-hmm. it's going to be okay. I just wonder why I waited until now to say something because it's been like that for a while. I mean, since yes, January. Because I think they've been getting asked a lot of questions like, hey, no, Fam, Q1 uh, normally is down. I'm not going to say that. It's, but it's worse. Like it but I say it's worse than normal. <laughs> uh, we're talking, a, we have seen a bigger drop off in advertising on websites than there was at the beginning of the pandemic. Well, the problem is too, and I, I, we ran into this a couple different places. And I'm not saying this place is doing that. I'm not saying this at all. But I know we've run into it other places. That when the ad rates go down and the money's tight, Suddenly you start getting less of the money and it's take our word for it. That's your share. I, I'm yeah. not saying that's what the ad networks are doing, but I have run, we have run into that instance in a couple of places we were that that's exactly what happened. And they never provide proof or accounting to show that they are telling the truth. And these places want to stay in business. So I think that they might, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if these places aren't taking the money and saying that, oh, this is all your cut because, you know. Oh, macroeconomic headwinds. Yeah. Everybody's, whoa. Uh, yeah, I, I actually would not be surprised at all. And there were some major ad networks. And I remember when uh, SVB collapsed, they said, yeah, we can't pay our people. Now, ours wasn't one of them, but there were people that were like, Right, yeah. I'm not saying this pay. is ours. I'm saying no, the no, other no, no, ones no. we've dealt with in the past. Um, I can see this happening to different people. I, I do believe the situation is much, much more dire for these bigger publications than they're letting on um, because I can tell you our drop year over year is like 75 to 80 percent like I'm not even effing kidding and I'm talking the same amount of traffic mm-hmm. okay so if it's hitting us and we're a small I mean we're, we're a small publisher we only have to pay our freelancers and pay for hosting right these these places, my God, how many salaries, full time salaries do they have? Mm-hmm. And how many millions of dollars a year do they have to to make? You know, um, and I can't imagine. Can you imagine just taking like a 75 percent hit like bam, just like that? And, the sad uh, thing is, it's like what we're seeing in tech and in media is so many people getting laid off. Yeah. And it's 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 not we, we do not celebrate this contrary. To no, think. no. Um, but um, it's, we're seeing a trend. But we're also like this was obviously coming because bad decisions were made. And if people had heeded the warnings years ago, we went, might not be in the situation now. Yeah. And, and look, this is basically the day of reckoning for all these media outlets. Very few of them were sustainable. A lot of them hired activists as journalists and they went out and they attacked audiences. So NPR, especially when NPR is out there rattling the tin cup and there are gamers that are right and left wing. Mm-hmm. And most most gamers don't give a crap about politics. As I was saying, most gamers don't even give a crap either way. That's just that like most people in the world are in the middle and they're just like they're not extremists on either end. But unfortunately, everybody in the middle gets lumped in or yeah. you know pushed one way or the other. Yes. And it's and it's bullshit. So what's gonna happen is when you rattle that tin cup, uh the gamers aren't gonna give you any money, NPR. I, I'm sorry. I mean you trying to tie gaming a to right wing hate groups, and you spent years uh, weighing in on the GamerGate situation, and uh, Which we were part of. Contrary to, I didn't even what know, a bunch of people like try to tell everybody. I didn't even know what it was. We had people they, they literally put us on a GamerGate list on Twitter, and I'm like, I had to ask. I'm like, okay, I, I vaguely remember hearing something about GamerGate. And then I had to have somebody to like, like try to fill me in on what Gamergate actually was. And it's like, even to this day, like nobody can agree on what the actual thing was. But a lot of these media outlets have been trying to bring it back because, you know, clicks and it was mm-hmm. good for business. But yeah, I mean, the end of the day, 
it's not sustainable. Um, these websites are not sustainable. And uh, I just think media is just laying people off like crazy because it wasn't necessary to have 55,000 different blogs all saying the same damn thing mm -hmm. in lockstep. And we're starting to see that these companies own like 20 blogs are like, do we really need five different pop culture sites? And do we really need like six different video well, game have, sites? But you have these sites that aren't sticking to what they're supposed to be about either. Like, you know, Kotaku, for example, it's supposed to be about gaming and tips and tricks and all that. They even said it on, on their top of their name. Yeah. And then, then they're out there doing political hot takes all the time. Yeah. You know, and they're trying to shame people politically one way or the other with their game. People aren't there for that. It's because they could afford to. Because they, they can't afford to. They haven't been able to for a while. They thought the money wasn't going to run out. And the money is running out. The time is running out. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see time's how. Time's up. Time's up. Time's up for a lot of the media. We'll see where things are at. I think this is going to be a massive reshuffle. I think in two or three years, everything is going to be different. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We're going to wrap this up. Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.